Happy Monday, everyone. I'm gonna warn you guys right now, if you hear people like laughing and giggling and having a good time. It's not us. It's not us. <laughs> it's definitely not us. There's an apartment complex out back and apparently it's smoke break time. And they're out there. Just having fun. They're having a really good time. Yes. That sounds Which is weird. Like... It's almost like they have a call center in their house. It's so strange. Because yeah. yeah. they're out there all the time. Anyways, that's not, that's neither here nor there. What are we doing today? Uh, Why so early? In, oh, no, it's like two o'clock. It's not early. Well, no. You're just like, normally, there. normally it's like two thirty, three o'clock when Google Live. Whatever. Anyway. You just got here, so I don't want to hear it. Uh, we're putting a P three hundred in this Ram with an L LC two I because it's got the Alpine system in it and whatever. Either way. Hey, from Germany. What's up? Hope you're having a good day. Well, not really, but it's Monday. How, who really? Does anybody have a good money? Reason why we're here is we just got a package in the mail. And I love doing unboxings because they're fun and I love doing them live. So hopefully there's nothing in it that is going to be scary or jump out at us. But it's from Japan. I'm thinking it's from a viewer. Does it have a name on it? It doesn't have a name. Probably, I don't know. Let me take a look. Um, it just says Japan. Japan. Maybe there's a thing inside of it. So what that means is we should open this thing up. Let's open this thing up. Hold on. Here we go. So in case you guys are wondering what Amazon Japan looks like, looks like that. All right, open this thing up. Now I'm hoping it's it's for us, but oh, is there is there is there a thing? Ooh, okay. All right, it looks like there's a piece of paper. Yeah, it is a piece of paper. All right, I like pieces of paper. Okay. What does it say? I don't know, it's inside. Calm down, calm down. Oh, there's a card. That's the card. Get to that. Hang on. Yep. It says, for you, one for the waiting room from Job. Ledger. That B E B E R G E R. Burr, burr, burr. From I'm Joe. So, from Joe. Thanks, Joe. Joe. Thank you, Joe. Let's see what it is. Right, that's pretty cool. I'm Look sorry, I, I suck at pronunciation. Me too. <laughs> you have an excuse. No. <laughs> <laughs> Does that say the same thing? I'm, I'm, th I'm thinking it says the same thing. Yep. Okay. Joe, Joe, you're cool. You are so cool. You got it right cool, here. Man. Just, just, I think we can cut it right there. Or oh, just slide right, it down. Like, Oh, there you go. okay. Now there's a piece of tape. Let's see what it is. Hopefully it's not porn. <laughs> oh, wow. Look at that. Oh, oh, dude. Is that an Alpine catalog? It's an Alpine Oh, it's catalog. like an, is that a magazine? Oh, look at that. That's a full on like magazine from Japan. Oh, uh, I think one's going to my house and one's going to yours. Yes. That's just a full on magazine. I wonder if it's a subscription. Oh, that would be cool as heck. I don't uh, care. I, I, uh, Car let, Audio. Me, let me see what it says. Car Audio Magazine from Japan. Dude, that is dope as heck. That is pretty Joe, cool. thank Joe, you so much. You so this must best. be, an, oh, you know what? Dude, it's Japanese. Dude, Japanese, you open a book like this. It reads like this. Japanese read their books backwards. This is the front page. That was an Alpine ad on the back. Hmm. The books go backwards. Okay. Ask me how I know. So yeah, that's, ooh, Helix. Yeah. Look at that. All right, let's see what we got here. We have match. Oh, what is that? Here. Oh, Eaton. Eaton? Eaton? Yeah, whatever. You get it. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Ooh, there's some ads. Ison. Yeah, keep Helix. going. Keep going. Yeah, those are just ads. Helix, That's a for sale yeah. ad. Oh, they're talking about Center Channel. Talk about, yeah. <laughs> it's the Japanese version of Andy Waymire. That's yep. pretty cool. Uh, Heck, who knows? It could be Andy just written in Japanese. DSP. Oh, they're talking about. Dang. Talking about. Where's the Google Translate button? I know. <laughs> that man. is so cool. Dude, that is cool. Hey. Uh, BMW, baby. Just did one of those. That's awesome. Look at that. All right, so you're going to take too long looking through that. Anyways, Joe, thank you so much for sending that to thank us. Thank you so much. Yeah, there's not one of those going into the waiting room. Those are. I'm getting one, he's getting one. That yeah. is so cool. Oh, that's uh, how do you know that? I used to do origami when I was in uh, middle school, and I babysat a family that was from Japan. Not the, I didn't babysit the actual family, I babysat their child. And 
when they got back from Japan, they brought me a Japanese book of origami. And of course, because they were Japanese, they explained to me how, because I'm like, this isn't making any sense. They're like, oh no, in Japan, you go this way. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. So I still have the book. So I've had the book for like 20, 20 a long time, long time, long time. Long, Probably, old, we yeah. have a CD with tracks. Pretty cool. One, two, three, four. It's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. That is awesome. Uh, and, oh, tonight. 6.30 Eastern Standard Time, Facebook Live, uh, the show, you know, that little Facebook show that we do, there's no guests tonight. You know what that means? Just me and him. That means, like, the first time in three shows, and not just that, any, our, our Q&A shows, it's back to Q&A. Mm -hmm. So we don't have any guests, although the three guests that we've had, if you guys haven't checked those out, we've had Eric Russell from Rockford, we've had Matthew from out of control and we've had brian mitchell from arc correct now if i didn't say matthew's last name that's because right now it's palumbo thank you it was bouncing around in my head because that's what that name sounds like uh and they were all great interviews so definitely go back and check those out uh can all pass filters on your amp damage your speakers no now okay let's back this up this was a question we were talking about last week because fernando was like Okay, there's something here that's kind of screwing with my head. Some manufacturers on the side of the amp put LP, HP, and all P, or all pass, okay? And then we have this thing called an all pass filter. And because we have a low pass filter and a high pass filter, you can see where things get confused. An all pass filter on an amplifier, meaning a switch that says all pass, that means, follow me on this, that it's passing all the sound there's no crossover. So if you don't turn on a high pass or a low pass, then you're not gonna get any crossover action, which means yes, you could damage the speaker. Now an all pass filter that you've been hearing about in DSP is a totally different thing. That is a phase correction on a per frequency level that changes the imaging of the car. So typically it's on the passenger side of the car, typically not always and there could be one or two of them. And what they're designed to do is when the frequency is, when the sound is playing at that frequency, it turns 180 degrees and draws the image across the dash to make it sound like there's a center channel-ish or more imaging up higher on the dash. And that's a very generic term, or that's a very generic description of an all pass filter. But yes, yeah, so it's one of those things in car audio that is both of them are confusing as hell because one references the other and the other has nothing to do with the one that I just described. So you have to know what you're meaning. An all pass filter in a DSP or an all pass filter on the side of an amplifier. Uh, you have decided on whether or not you're going to make and sell templates for speakers. No, we have not decided on any of that because we've just been super busy. Um, and we're still, honestly, we're still playing with the, the CNC, um, the laser, and, and getting everything to where we want it to be. Uh, daily, we learn new techniques. And so until we're extremely proficient with it, we're not going to do it. Now, if you look at somebody like Steve Mead, who now has two giant lasers and has just gone back and very sexily redesigned some of his products, that's pretty cool. We want to kind of try to avoid that and just, like, if we're going to come out with something, we want to just do it once. So, and like everything else, I'm apparently slow when it comes out to, you know, marketing and making money. Uh, do you guys think a 3D printer will be beneficial for custom audio installers? I think it will. If you're into the long projects, meaning you're going to have a car for a week or something like that, then yeah, a 3D printer, and we already know it has because there are some shops that have them, is definitely going to be beneficial. But for somebody like us that has a car for maximum two days, if it takes me three or four hours to design something and it takes 12 hours to print it, it's not going to work out too well. So that's where that kind of thought process is there. Now, once they get faster, it's all good. Uh, sorry if I disconnect the battery. Will I lose the tune on the head unit you installed for me? Depends. Uh, so there is a feature in Kenwood and the modern pioneers that have save settings. Uh, in the, audio settings. In the audio settings. Mm -hmm. So in both Pioneer, if you go to the drop down, you slide up. Going through the menu, it should say save settings. You would hit save settings, uh, and then it will burn those into the radio. And then in Kenwood, there is also a save settings. If it's a new unit, it's on the audio page. If it's an older unit, it's in the main menu page. Normally in the Pioneer it says uh, save we, audio settings or save, save all settings. Save all settings. So, all settings. Just, just um, and then it will memorize those for you. 
The other thing you could do is get a memory minder to where if you disconnect the battery, something like this, they make all different kinds and sizes and affordability. You plug this into the OBD2, when you disconnect the battery, it keeps all the memory for you. Uh, we use this because there again, I'm plugging the battery now can be a tragedy when you're working on the car. Will you start installing Helix amplifiers? We're not a Helix dealer at the moment. I don't know if that's in the cards for right now. Um, that's between uh, Paul, the store owner, and, and Helix. Uh, obviously, our relationship with them is totally different. Will we install them? Yeah, if they send us some and, and we need to install them, of course, you know. Mm -hmm. But right at the moment, it's not anything like we have a... Remember, there's two things going on here. There's Smash Force Productions, which is the video aspect and all the fun that, that we do. And then there's the store and the store and this. We don't share the same checkbook, so... Yeah, that, that gets into a whole different debate. I have an 08, uh, 2018 Elantra, I already have a P312. Want to add a four channel amp. Is the LC7i the best way to go? Okay, if it's a base model in Elantra that just has four outputs from the radio, meaning front, rear, left, right, yeah, LC7i is definitely the way to go. However, it's got the premium sound system with multi-channel output, LC7i, definitely not the way to go. So you need to figure out how many channels you have, and then you can figure out if that's the right piece for you. Alpine ILX 207 is what you did for my Toyota. Okay, so on an ILX 207, what you want to do is download the TuneIt app from the App Store, both Android and iPhone. Once you download the TuneIt app, you can, you can save the tune. So you plug your phone into the USB and you can save the tune on your phone. And then when you reinstall the radio, you can download it back into the radio. So that's how you do in the Alpine is use the TuneIt app. Glad you asked. And it works because Victor did it and I was like, oh, that's so cool. So, but that's how you do it. You do it through the TuneIt app. Uh, is 150 watts RMS per channel too much to power Rockford Fosgate punch components? No. Hey, uh, what's up, Dean Fernando? What's up, William? What's up, man? After installing my uh, replacement radio with the RP4 from PAC, will I need a T-harness and high to low adapters to power my doors and subs? My car has factory amp. No, the RP4, uh, the RP4 harness, okay, for GM, then it's going to have RCAs on the end of it, and you shouldn't have cut those off. You should have just plugged them into the RCAs on the back of the radio. Uh, certain ones need noise filters, certain ones don't. So if it's, if it's a Ford, it doesn't matter. Um, you don't you don't need to do anything. Was that? Oh, that's the owner of Blam. We just yeah. met him. You guys remember that guy, huh? the French dude? In the video. Yeah, he was really cool. Was um, really cool. So if you manage to cut the RCAs off, you can obviously you can obviously solder new ones on and be all set and ready to go. Plug it into the back of the radio, and that will work fine. Uh, hey, what is the point of the center channel speaker on my F-150? Uh, the reason why they do that is because, for one, the audio system in there sucks really bad. And because they don't want to, they have just little tweeters up in the corner of the dash that, they're, again, suck. By putting the speaker up in the center of the dash, it kind of gives them some imaging. If you replace them with better tweeters and power, you will not need the center channel at all to do a one-seat car. Um at all it'll sound wonderful we never retain that speaker it's garbage it's not up mixed it's just a, a combination of left and right and it's not very good uh so I, I wouldn't i wouldn't retain it i would get rid of it even if you're keeping the factory radio it's still got to go bye bye is the alpine dsp still in your camaro for right now it is haven't changed it. but i really want to get rid of it yeah i was thinking about that yesterday uh, if I lived in Florida, I would definitely install an aftermarket Android radio Alpine Halo on my 2018 Tundra. Don't trust installers near me just because what I see on those 911 reviews. Now, if you have a 2018 Tundra, you can actually buy a Halo from Alpine already installed in the kit, harness done, plug and play-ish. Uh, so if, if you really want one for your car, you can buy that direct from Alpine. The Alpine store is on Amazon, and they will. it's all built. It comes pre-built in the kit, wiring harness done. So something to think about if you really want one of those. Cool. Uh, Tune-in is awesome. Too bad it is being phased out. I know, but on a 207, it still works. 
No one caught on. I mean, cell phones, yeah, it's weird. Bobby, what's going on? Hey. What's up, guys, from Toledo, Ohio? Thanks, buddy. You're welcome. Uh, howdy from Dallas. Hope you guys have another great day. Here's hoping. Mm-hmm. I did a Maestro or Crux wiring harness in my 13 camera Kenwood hedge unit. Maestro for the win, especially with the Kenwood. You get all the cool features. It's definitely worth it. You guys are awesome, by the way. Thank you for making videos. Oh, don't mention it. That's mm-hmm. what we do. And if any of you are wondering why there wasn't a video this morning, I haven't had a chance to tell you because you just got here. So I watched the, um, the Hernandez thing on Netflix, all three oh, episodes. Yes. Yeah. I watched Dracula, all three episodes, wow. and I also watched on Amazon all ten episodes of The Hunters. Wow, you're a trooper. So my weekend was, I, I got a stiff neck, because I literally sat and did, this was, a, this was a Haley weekend, in the sense that we did nothing but watch TV and eat pizza. So it was really nice. cool. And did I eat pizza? I have to think. I don't know. It was just a metaphor for not doing anything. But no, that was all we did this weekend. And I caught up on all my series. And so there was no video because I was up stupid late last night doing this. Because I know I won't have time to watch it any other time. Uh, Why? What would you replace the Alpine with? Do Alpine VS or VS, Alpine VS or Audio Control GM 608? Um, no, so the Alpine has, we're using it because it has eight channels of power in it. In the Camaro, we needed something to um, have amplification and DSP. And it was fun, and we did it, and that's cool. However, sitting on my shelf over there, I have the Arc Audio eight channel DSP amplifier, and I have two different Audison eight channel DSP amplifiers. There's nothing wrong with the Alpine, it's just I have two other products I'd like to put in there and play with because it's kind of what we do. Um, so that's why it's just a matter of, I have to build another T harness and plug it in and play with that. I love the Alpine. I had a guy come in today from New Jersey that was like, Hey, you're the only guy that's ever done anything on this. What can you tell me about it? And it was like, it's cool. It does this, but that's why, uh, 2000 Ken Camaro bank. Yep. System four signal wires in the back to DSR one. Uh, yep. Amplifier, new components and rear coaxials. Good. Very good. Yeah. You can do that with that. And there again, if you don't want to cut the harness, you can get that harness. If you go watch the video we did with the Boston Acoustic Stereo in my 2010 Camaro, we walk you through the process of making the T-harness. That is in the car lab video uh, for my car when we put the Alpine DSP in. You have to repin it. That's all you have to do. Or just, you know, make your own colors. How long have you guys been in the industry? Uh, this July will be 30 years for me. And then you're going on what? Six or seven? Eight? Seven years. Seven, seven years. He's going on seven? 30. Yeah, my, my anniversary is in July. Yay. 37 years. Woo! These nuts. Um, I'm from the Bahamas and love your videos. Literally watch you all daily. That is so Thank cool. You, Thank man. you. Audio Frog, GS60s with Alpine tweeters or Focal. Um, why not just get the Audio Frog tweeters? Oh, because they're probably too big. I would get the Focal. I get the Focal. If you like that, really, like, Alpine's kind of very bland not not too exciting which is kind of its cool thing they're very vanilla uh if you want something with more characteristics and just kind of like yeah go with the focal those are the differences uh couch potato sunday definitely and clone wars haven't watched clone wars yet it's it, that'll be next month sometime uh thanks for taking time no problem canadian guys oh yeah uh that was the canadian guy that came in he's going to watch uh, the lightning actually plays his toronto team so he's going to go watch that while he's here see what a real hockey game looks like yeah Anyways, uh, where's the video on the 19 Raptor 911 you did? Uh, the one with the Raptor fuse holder or CCA wire. Um, that's going to be this. The only footage we did was we filmed this with it, and that'll be next week sometime. Or the week, yeah, it'll be next week sometime. Or this week sometime. Um, but, yeah, we didn't actually we, – we didn't film it. We, we were on a time crunch. That was why the Saturday show was so late. Uh, that car took an, an way more time than we, we had planned for, so it really kind of sucked. But, yeah. Uh, hold on. Uh, what about the Helix DSP? I think you should give the guy with the cool black Audi that Helix DSP. Yeah, no. No. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. No. Uh, slow day. No, today's actually really busy. We have um, right here. It's, it's waiting for us, and we have another car coming in after that. I just... We got the package, and I wanted to open it up. Why? Because the curiosity was killing Thank me. Thank you, Joe. He just Thank got you. here. Joe sent us this cool thing right here. It's some cool magazines from Japan. Car audio magazines. How awesome is that? Yeah. Totally digging this. This is so cool. Straight up Japan. 
Yeah, I'm excited. It is. I love magazines. But that's it. And with that, we're going to end the show, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Remember, tune in tonight at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time, and we will talk to you then. Bye. Bye. Fernando. Yes, sir. Grab. What is that for? Oh, grab your knife. Grab my knife. Yeah. Here. Oh, you got cutters? Oh, that's a, that's a knife? No, no, grab your knife. Well, cut your wire first, silly. Oh, that's fine. We have unboxings to do. It's unboxing reviews. All right, before we do that, though, let's see what he's working on. So we're working on a Rockford Prime 500.1. Pretty. Uh, that is going to go into this Hyundai Tucson Limited. This is Limited, which means no one makes anything for this car because it has a factory navigation system in it. This guy right here. So if you look up this year, make a model, they're not going to have that plug. So we just spent the better part of a couple hours engineering our own harnesses. So we had to make this harness, which retains our factory backup camera. Uh, this is the power plug, which already existed. And then of course the steering wheel control harness, we had to make that one too. So nobody makes anything for this. So that was a lot of fun. There's our Volt 3.9, which is powering up our six volt camera system from the factory. We got that all working. It was tough. Found out like the steering wheel controls were for like an 08 Sonata. Uh, so that was a pain. We got that, but either way, we got some cool stuff going on over here. We got a box. What's a box? This box is from Joe Hobart of Joe Kicker. Hobart. So I'm to assume, yep, there we go. There's gonna be some Kicker stuff in here. So let's open this guy up and see what's inside. I think I know what's in it and I'm really excited because, and I don't think these are, I think these are gonna come. Wow, let's just open it up. Yeah, he taped it up, man. I know, drum roll. Oh, it's so exciting. Just, just, okay. I'm just right, right here, right here. Slow down, slow down. Do a nice job. We want a clean box. We don't want to destroy it. Wow, we, keep the box. Yes, we're going to keep the box. Just in case we have to send them back. Oh, they are finished products. Ooh. So we got a kicker key, 500.1. Look at that. And then, oh, here it is right here. There it is, that's the new key lock. That's the cool high level to low level with auto correction built into it. And of course the, the key 501 that is got the subwoofer correction built into it. Okay, wow, I didn't think these were gonna be finished products. All right. That is Ooh. so cool, wow, it's tiny. Yep, those are the five LEDs. So you have power, Q3, high, ground, mid, low, power. Yeah, so what this is going to do is this is going to light up when you play uh, the sound to tell you if what you've tapped into has the right frequency for what you're trying to do. So if you tap into a speaker and you're trying to do a subwoofer, if the subwoofer light doesn't come on, then this isn't going to work. And then, so, of course, it can auto-correct everything. We have our bottom right there, high to low. Ground. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Key. Uh. Key. Don't know. Gonna have to read the instructions. So this is the first we're seeing this. Oh, and power. yeah. Okay. That's our input. Boom. Wow. Right is, those are some thick power and grounds. Holy yeah. cow! It's like a 12 gauge. Uh. Yeah. Kind of. It's yeah. like a 12 gauge. Yeah. Hmm. They're gonna. I don't know if these are completed or if these were just like for CES. I think it's well, remember, because they go I mean, through they like. They give you everything. Yeah, but they, where's the instructions? Oh, is that the it's instructions? Right there. All right, cool. Let's open the 501. All right, so we have that. Yep. See? Everything is done. That's it. Oh, okay, yep. this is right. bigger. Yep, I told you it's a little bigger, so hang on. We'll come over here. Oh, sorry. Crap. This guy. So here's the original key. Now the original key is getting a small upgrade too, a little bit more power, but it's the same footprint. So there you go. So there's the kicker key and the new 501. So this is your five channel amplifier. Yeah. And it, it looks like there's a slight color, but this, this like I said, is the old one. Yeah. So the new one probably matches if yeah. I was yeah, to yeah, guess. Yeah. Or then again, like I said, I don't know if this is a finished production because the kicker goes through a lot of steps before stuff goes out the door. 
but it is working. It's a functional piece. That's all I cared about because we want to go ahead and put it into Game Haley's match. car. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. So there you go. So that's the new kicker key lock key with lock. the auto correction built into it that we've been talking about. Super excited to have one of those to play with. And then the new kicker key 501 magical sub amplifier. So that's going to be able to go in and fix all our problems. You just got to peel stuff off. Now, one other thing here these guys so when we were on the plane last time when we flew out to california um we were sitting there going hey like fernando doesn't have noise canceling headphones he's not that even kind of money man. yeah whatever <laughs> uh he's never experienced the joy of noise canceling so i called up our gal Lori and i said hey how would i think we should do a review on some headphones because everybody knows how much of a headphone nerd i am so i was like send me some and let's do a review and we're going to figure this out so we have a you know next month we'll be flying out to indy so we're going to have some fun with these and, and see how good they are compare them to the pair i have which are equal a lot more than these but ooh, check them out hold on he's opening the box so they come with a cool carrying case cool carrying case gotta keep the box man gotta keep the box i threw one of my headphone boxes away and now it's like Oh, I can't believe you did that, bro. Oh, really? Yeah. There you go. That's a nice finish. They have an input? Yeah, so they yeah, got an input. input yeah. All right, cool. So, because we. Yep. A and C right there. That might be a talk button. Volume down. Track up, track down. Nice. Oh, it's on. Oh, yeah, it's waiting for you to pair. Oh. Anyways, oh, yeah. so let's pull the bottom out and see if there's the cables underneath. See if, see, if, see if they hid those on the bottom. All right, so there's all your cables and stuff, instructions. Stop. Stop. Collaborate and listen. All right, so that's cool. There you go. Now there's the basic instructions. Go up, go more up, and keep going. Jeez. Just keep going. All right, so we got a question here. Are those for me? No, they're not. But they sorry, are for me. sorry. <laughs> uh, when installing fast rings, do you put the medium sized ring behind the speaker or on the inside of the door? So that would depend on whether or not you're doing a uh, like a speaker baffle. So if you're doing like a speaker baffle, usually it, it can attach to the baffle. Uh, if not, it's going to go on the inside of the door. So. It, that's that's really but yes it's going behind the speaker um yes agree yes so sometimes like let's say you're putting six and a half where a six by nine hole is it's gonna go on the actual baffle there you go so we have the kicker what is the model number of this if you Zap. actually guys interesting interesting interested i like interesting i think it's uh, on the top of the box no no For, yeah right dude it's it's like right there that's the that's the model right number there. Yeah. i know no this is the model number right here this is the model number. yeah crush in okay wow wow fernando doing his tootsie roll <laughs> there you go uh yeah. zapco or audio control i would say audio control well, depends. yeah i'm gonna go with audio control i mean if they're asking that's what i'm buying nothing against either one of them i just hey from iowa what's going on man did you get your amp i hope you did and what's up victor this is this is a cool thing um they have the k the key lock and they have the new ks oh the new speakers. ks speakers are on there yeah ks new ad for the speakers yeah that because oh, something is happening <laughs> i'm linking <laughs> It's because the air compressor is not on. Yeah, it's not on. And it's just oh, let out. Yeah, yeah it'll be fine. Uh, we're yeah. working on this Hyundai Tucson, Victor. It's been a nightmare all day. It's been all day. So, What's up? What's all right, up? so that's it. That's, that's it. what we got. We got some new toys that we're going to be filming some videos on. Super excited about that. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, well, soon. We'll get them done. We have to get them done before Dallas. We'll have them done quicker than that, though, because... Yeah, this is huh? this is really nice. That. Oh, dude, I can't wait to do that. I thing. think I think we're just gonna. 
I can't wait to play with that. We're going to be playing with that on the bench. We'll definitely do a Saturday live show with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. That is the new hotness for sure. So new toys are always good. New toys are always good. Uh, the key is going to go into Haley's truck. Right. Uh, don't forget the phone. Um, we're going to take out what she has for a supple for now and put that in so we can demo that. Missouri in the house. Glad to get to catch live shows with the worst aspect ratio in the world. Yes, Greg, isn't it? This sucks. I mean, I switched to the better phone, so now we have um, the newest iPhone. Whether that's better or not is depending on your preference of phone. But so that we could have a wider screen. So that way we have a bigger aspect ratio. It still sucks, but, you know, at least now it's the widest it can be by an Apple product, which is all I have. What's up from Dallas? Well, that's it. That's what we got for you today. We wanted... We got another, that's two unboxings in a row. It is two. New phone helped a lot. I'm, I'm, and that was worth the money I had to spend. Because <laughs> these things, I had to buy it out of contract, so it hurt a little. Uh, what, sub, what sub are you putting in Haley's car? I think I'm going to put a ported um, uh, comp, uh, comp, not, uh, comp, yeah. R, uh, comp R. Comp R. Comp yeah, R. I think I'm going to put the ported comp R factory box. Everything looks good on our end. See, there you go. Mm -hmm. uh, it's future. Uh, oh, the <laughs> future. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. 1920 by 1080. <laughs> it's just the wrong. Uh, was it something I did that caused the amp to take a crap? Honestly, I have no idea. It, it was just, it could have been bad luck. I, I was, especially with products nowadays, when things break, they just sometimes break. Mm -hmm. Just like you sometimes step out and get hit by a bus. Uh, new phone looks good. Yeah, so, I mean, it's nice because it does 60 frames. So, like, if you guys caught the, the live, not live show from uh, Cali, we mm -hmm. shot the whole thing on the phone. So, that was that was 100% phone. No, uh, we, we just, since we had it going, we had other cameras, but we're like, screw it, let's use it. So, yeah. and that's why everyone was like, oh, it's high def. No, it wasn't. It was just 60 frames instead of 30 frames. So, for those of you that, that are, are curious about frame rate, most movies are shot... Uh, previously were shot in 24 frames that's why when you go back and look at an older movie it was very silky very smooth um you know there was motion blur that was enjoyable it's because it was shot at 24 frames and your camcorders were shot at 30 frames that's why they looked weird but now we're used to seeing that so 60 frames at 1080 is like just that's where you get a lot of motion and a lot of what just looks like sharpness it's not 4k because you shoot 4k at 30 frames and it's it's okay. The, the nice thing about that is you can crop, but... Mm. Oh, so if you crop, it's not 4K. Now it's 2K. Well, you could crop 4K out to 1080. So that's that's what makes things nice. So if you're doing things where you have to zoom in. I know this has been video talk with Dean oh, and Fernando. All right. Well, um, let's go back to work. Uh, use the arc, shallow sub, spoiler. Spoiler. It may end up going in there, but for the purpose of the video, it's going to have to be a kicker sub because, as you can obviously understand, if we're putting in a kicker product, um, they kicker. sent us a kicker product to review. It's going to have to be a kicker sub that goes in there. Just how these things work. Mm -hmm. um, hello, hello. What's up, Bobby? What's up, Bobby? Uh, Fernando, did you order your acrylic Bobby Gately box for your ah, 10 yet? No. I, I don't think so because my trunk is so small. Yeah, I don't think uh, that would be worth it. I don't think I don't think it's gonna be. And to be honest, I just I don't even need the acrylic Bobby Gately box. I think just the regular Bobby Gately box would be good. I don't know, maybe I don't know. We'll figure that out. Yeah. Uh, we got a guy here that, that a new guy that we've been talking to here. Oh no, there's another guy that wants. There's a guy here in Florida that builds boxes, and somebody on here contacted me and was like, I want to have a box sent to you guys. I got to figure that out. Okay. Um, uh good to see you trying to get in the factory amp location and the plugs oh yeah we always try to retain as much factory plugage as possible except for speakers yeah I'm not retain your speaker plugs just not going to happen unless you bring them to me and absolutely make me do it but no i hate speaker plugs i hate them, I hate them, I hate them. uh that song glenn mitchell yeah. played is awesome thanks for posting the information oh you're welcome i i loved it too when i it, trust me when you hear it in his car and then you listen to it in your car totally ruins listening it to your, your it totally ruins listening to it in your car because it just it's like that's not how it sounded in his car damn it but anyways yeah. uh 4k 60 frames looks great with the gemini man you know it's funny too because like the gemini man like you watch that on the plane i watched that at my house 
it was a dumb movie, but it was a cool movie. But when you watch the special features and find out that like it was all fake, like it was all computer generated, they did an amazing job making a fake Will Smith. That was crazy. Uh, put the L17 in there. It's not a bad idea, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's Don't a good idea. L17. Yeah, that's not a yeah. bad idea. 500 bucks. Yeah. 500 bucks, 500 watts, whatever comes first. No, yeah. that's not a bad idea because we have that sitting over there, so. Yeah, hmm. that would be cool. Honestly. Yeah, that might actually be a good idea because then she'll have more and space. And that's because in her car. It's, a brand new, it's not a brand new product, but it's kind of new because that was last year. Yeah, that, yeah that'd, that'd work out. Okay. Boom. All right, good idea. Yeah, All right, you win. You don't win anything, but you win, you know. <laughs> All right, guys, listen, we got to get back to work. Uh, no need to find it for Nav TV. Oh, okay. No, uh, no, we need to find it for Nav TV. Oh, we will. Greens for Panama. All right, listen, we got to go. We got to get back to this, this car we're working on. So lots of fun. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye. Bye. <laughs> what the heck? I'd say do an imitation of Karate Kid. And that's the yeah. You know what they call that? Um, it's named after a bird. Yeah. Hey man, what's up, Brian? It's called the swan. Swan. I'm swimming. You're swan? Yeah. You're swimming? You're, you're swell? What's going on, everyone? And welcome to a beautiful Wednesday. As you notice, there's no car in the install bay. We actually just finished. We're between cars at the moment. It's kind of like being between houses. Um, and I know, right? How often does that happen? Yeah. I know. So hey, but it's getting so ready. It's coming. It is getting ready to rain for the next six hours. So really? yay us! But since we had a free moment, we thought we'd come on and say hi. And we got another box in the mail today. I'm excited. You know, coming back from Knowledge Fest, it just like I'm gonna start out um, starting. Oh, and of course we've been on the phone with some vendors. Hopefully we got some really cool videos coming up for you guys with some products that we don't carry here but are really cool products and we want you guys to see them. Correct. And that's what I like. Now, what I have here. What we have in this box is a, this is funny. So this, this is something we've already reviewed and we were looking the other day and we we're like, holy crap. Like we have tons of these cause like we like to keep the products here in the install bay so that we can use them to help explain what it is that you guys ask us. So that's why we have so much stuff here. Um, and this is one of the products you guys ask a ton about and we, we don't have one here, but oh, rain, we had snow today. Oh. <laughs> hey, you win, there's no question about it. Uh, you can have all the snow, you, you can have all the snow. I don't want it, I've had it, I'm good. So no snow, um, nice. but and I'm not complaining about the rain. No. It just means I can't run tonight, which kind of sucks, but I'll get over it. It's two nights in a row. It's kind of ticking me off because I don't like running in the rain, especially when it's cold. Summertime, it's beautiful to run in the rain. Does the DSR-1 work with the 2015 Nissan Altima 2.5 without cutting the harness? If you can find a T-harness for it, so I believe Nissan, I think Metra yeah, has. Metra, Metra, Metra has. Online.com should have the T-harness for that. We have the video that shows how to make the T-harness up so you can use it with the DSR-1. Oh, no, what? No, no. What? I think IData has the Nissan T-harness now. Because Nissan came out with two T-harnesses that were non... They might actually go to IData first because they might make a plug-and-play T-harness for that. Okay. If not, then go to Metra. But yeah. If it's the non-amplified system, it has to be the non-amplified because you only have four channels of input. That's right. Uh, if it's more than four, then, or if it's bows or anything like that, then no, it's it's not gonna work. Um, felt like it was gonna snow Friday in Sarasota. Ooh. Yeah, I'm with you there, right? Dude, it was cold. But hey, every now and then, we gotta get our five cold days a year, right? Wow. All right, so let's get back to this. So this product, uh we we just didn't have and you guys ask a lot about it and uh, so we got one all right let me know when you're done playing oh I'm, I, I don't know <laughs> i already opened it i already saw it so. oh you were. <laughs> all right so what do we got there pull it out of the box so we have an epicenter like i said this is one of those the products you guys ask us tons of questions about and 
now we have one here this also makes it really easy for us now is we're going to do a car stereo lab we're going to go ahead and put this in fernando's car and we're going to be able to show you I'm how simple it is trying to put a lot of stuff in my car it's like it's impossible yeah we're working on a new sponsor for your car so we're hoping to get a new sponsor so we can uh change it up put, a little bit yeah put different um, stuff give different stuff in there to but, just kind of spice go. it up a little bit but there we go we have the epicenter so that's the guitar pick i'm gonna have to keep this so you know what the guitar pick is for right yeah it's their gain screwdriver yeah, yeah i thought yeah. that's neat when you go to audio control they have a bowl of those sitting on the counter uh the in dash one is more my favorite though i understand it is pretty cool i like that but it's getting harder and harder to find a place to put a half in so friend is so tired of that he can't even open his eyes to do the unboxing hard worker is that what it is fernando Oh, oh, you've been saving them. Oh, are you kidding me? Oh, I didn't know you were saving them. <laughs> Bobby's here. Uh, no, I don't know what I do. Actually, no, I think you get them all before I even get a chance yeah. to get them. So that's funny. Good for you. I know. Good for you. We need all. We need to learn how to play guitar. So the, the other thing cool about guitar picks is when you're at audio control, when you're in the office, if you remember going in the office when we were there, there was when we were signing the amplifier that we just gave away, um there's guitars hanging on the walls and those actually work and guys there during oh, really? lunch break and stuff will go in and play the guitar so it's it's pretty neat um i run network mode on my pioneer do you know what type of crossover pioneer uses on their head unit liquids rally or butterworth Ooh, no i do not mm, i don't know if that's it, 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 on the kenwood i'm sorry on the pioneer if they're using liquids or butterworth for their 24 db slope that's a great question. That would be cool. Yeah. Let, me, let, me, let me work on that for a little bit. Let me work on that for a little bit. See if I can find that one out. Yeah, on the epicenter, right. does it get fed a full range signal versus low pass to operate properly? Yes, you need to have a signal uh, feeding it. It starts at 220. Anything from 160, you know, up or yeah. down, as it were, is really what you need. So you need, you need at least 160 is kind of the, the, the good spot for it. So what you would do is run as, if you're coming out of like a radio or something like that, put the crossover up as high as it can go, as high as it can go. Six dB slope, whatever. If you can't turn it off, just put it up as high as it can go and then use the crossover and the amplifier for it. So let it get as much signal as you can into it. The more signal you put into it, the better the results are. That's, that's how that works. Uh, that is true. Hidden in the dash somewhere, yeah. <laughs> um, five minutes, five minutes on the day. Oh, uh, the best five minutes of the day. Thank you, thank you. I can read. Uh, I think Pioneer is linked with Rally. I think Pioneer is linked with Rally, but I don't want to say it is without being 100% sure. So I would definitely want to check into that. It might be in the owner's manual, which you can download onto your phone and read at your leisure. That's what we used to do when we did a lot of unboxings and people would ask us great questions. I would just have all the owner's manuals on my phone in the notes program. Uh, what is the big black box that's hanging from your ceiling saw it the other day filter oh yeah this guy hold on so this is an air filtration system that we uh bought and installed because at a, one point in our lives we thought we were going to do uh, some cutting of wood and because wood turns to dust so we did some testing to see if that was going to be capable of working and it was not so uh, there it hangs. It doesn't do anything other than hold our clock, which the battery is dead on. Right. So it, it's kind of useless at the moment. Um, but every now and then, if it stinks really bad in here from whatever happens, we'll turn it on and just let it suck the crap out of the air. But it works really well. It just, the, the dust that comes from MDF is just not, not enough. So we would have to really lower it and it just didn't make any sense. Uh, I'm 42. I remember these from when I was a kid. Also, FM Booster. It was made by Sparkomatic. Oh yeah, you can still get. I think, I think, I think you can still get an FM Booster. FM Booster. Yeah, it's a little. Yeah, they sucked, but it's this goofy little thing that had like a five or ten dB boost, big button on it. You pressed. Um, but yeah. Lunch time with Five Star. No, no, they don't work. What's up? Uh, ready to sell that Zen Nine? Nope. Um, <laughs> Hello from snowy Chicago. Hi from rainy Clearwater, Florida. <laughs> uh, Dean, Rob, uh, Dean, Rob Wimpy heard your voice 
and came up the stairs. <laughs> nice. I love Rob. Nah, uh, we're getting ready to hang out with them when we're in Orlando. We'll be there with Audison. Yep, so Audison our schedule hurts. as it stands right now is uh, Indy is going to be with Amp Global. So we'll be hanging out with Jeff Smith. Um, nice. We're going to do a couple live shows with him and Ada and, and the gang. And then we're going to be in Orlando with um, Electromedia, which yep. is Audison Hertz, which is Rob Wimpy. So we'll have Lance Doss, the boss. Yes, right. And hopefully he's going to make the trip. I don't know. You know, it's weird who they bring. But we're going to be hanging out with them in Orlando. Uh-huh. Uh, so that's cool because that's that's a new person. We've That's a new – we haven't spent any time with them. So no. we're, we're happy to bring on, you know, new companies and stuff like that. And then we just locked in Kicker for dallas so yes. we'll have kicker in dallas because they're finally coming back to knowledge fest their first is going to be in orlando yep um and so we're planning the shows for all the fun that we're going to be doing at, at knowledge fest and whatnot so in indy because we just came off of doing the show tour in in california and there's there's going to be nothing new in indy as far as the show goes but we're going to have tons of cars so yep. and you guys really like the car reviews that we did so we're going to do car reviews. In okay. Orlando. And Orlando is going to be May 15 to May 17. Thank you. Yep. But we'll probably do another show, show floor tour in Orlando because that's going to be a big one. We have, yeah. like, Morel is going to be there. Kicker's going to be there uh, for their first show in years. And then there's a couple other brands that are coming out that haven't come out to any of the other ones. So we'll probably either do Orlando or we'll do Dallas. I don't know which one we're going to do yet, but... There again, we got a lot of sh- live and also pre-recorded shows coming up. Um, it's going to be exciting. So naturally, we're always trying to make cool content that you guys like. And the car videos did pretty well. You guys always ask, what were the cars we liked? And so instead of us just telling you which ones we liked and try to describe them to you. We're going to go and sh- Sometimes I'm a little snow, but yeah. Fernando, slow, but Fernando was like, why don't we just film the cars? And I was like, I don't know. Why don't we just film the cars? So we're going to film the cars. Thank Fernando. If it doesn't work. Yellow Fernando. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hey, I have a Toyota Tundra 2018, 19, uh, 1794 with the JBL. I took out the original sub and put an LC2i on the sub. Input is that good or should I splice into the rear speakers instead? No, no. You want to definitely connect to the factory subwoofer. If you want it to sound the best humanly possible, I mean you want to do away with all the crazy crap that, that radio is putting out. You still can do an Amp Pro Toyota into it. So you can do the AP4 TY 11 or 12. 11 or 12. It's an 11 or 12. They make 11, 12, and 13, mm-hmm. but I think, it's, I think it's a 12. And that will give that'll allow you to keep everything JBL and give you a full preamp for the sub as well as for mids and highs. So if you eventually want to replace or amplify your mids and highs, you can. You'll have all the pieces in place to do that. So that's really cool there. Is Alpine processor still in the Camaro car lab? Yes, it is. Um, I can guarantee you it won't be in there for that much longer. It is going to come out because, for one, we have Austin Hertz coming up as a show sponsor like we're talking about. So it's going to come out. So either the Prima or the Forza can go in there so we can talk about that because, obviously, when we have a show sponsor, we want to make sure we give them their due, you know, talk about their products. Yeah. as in just like in a couple weeks, we're going to be talking about some of the uh, Pack Audio, uh, Stinger, and all those fun MX, products. New MX, yeah, so we'll have a lot of those fires, products to talk yeah. about. So it's a whole circle of life, you know, thank them. And, and, and plus, there you go. Don't yeah. be jealous. Don't be jealous. God, don't be jealous. I'm jealous. Why are you jealous? It's Saturday and Sunday were beautiful, life. though. Saturday yeah. and Sunday were beautiful. I spent the whole day inside. Orlando, when and where? You said that, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, um, so I need two four-channel amps to run two sets of Rockford Fox AT2 components. If you want them to run to their maximum capability, meaning go full by amp into the crossovers, yeah. yeah, that's a great way to do it because those T2 components have uh, by amp capability built into the crossover, so you can run front and rear directly into them and then mid and tweet directly out which makes it really cool you could also get into a bigger active dsp sometime down the road like a 10 channel 12 channel dsp uh and then do full active front full active rear but you don't have to obviously two like t 404s would be phenomenal and then you can just yeah go live into that yeah that'd be cool that would be cool it's kind of my dream it's always convincing people it's hard uh yes oh that is lance i will be there okay play uh oh he's a softball play up softball dad oh that must be his daughter i think that's daughter oh lance that's lance yeah that's lance 
Oh, okay. So Lance will be there. Awesome. Yeah. We're going to have fun. We are going to have so much fun in Orlando. Uh, Marvel Land opened this summer at California Adventure. Nice. Thanks, Bobby. That means next year when I go, I'll be able to do Star Wars and Marvel. Marvel if I still go next year. Let's see how that goes. Uh, just started watching your YouTube channel and love, love the videos. Thank you. What's up from Las Vegas, New Mexico? Ooh, you guys are killing it. We're trying Thank really you. hard. Um, you. Take an empty suitcase so you can fill it with Morel 45th anniversary amplifiers. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's in Orlando, I'll just take them out of the car and throw them yeah. in our car. Uh, with the little SUV you did with the blown past your side speakers, you said it had a subwoofer that you did not hear. Did not hear. Did it work? And did you replace it? Okay, so yes, I, meaning I did hear it and it was not blown, I think was what I was trying to get across. May not have, because sometimes, you know, words brain think doesn't always work out. No, you could hear the factory subwoofer. It was perfectly fine. So we did not have to replace it. I, is where I was trying to get across in that. That was the only speaker that wasn't blown. ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo están? Uh, why are the Merlin apps so affordable? Because they don't have DSPs built into them. I mean, it, it, there again, it, it's... They also they're just awesome amps at a good price. I mean, don't knock a gift horse in the mouth. They're, they're yeah. not... You know, the thing is, you got to look at the Merlin amp. you got to realize it's a 505. Okay, so it's like 550 watts. A 550-watt amp is kind of like the most affordable amp in car audio mm -hmm. as far as by a name brand. I'm not looking at all the other ones. Um, so it can't be that crazy priced. And then if you look at the the 5 channel, it's an AB class front end and a class D sub. It's very few amplifiers are like that, if any. And it's like, it's not a lot of power. So it doesn't have to be expensive. It's, it's, and it's all analog as far as gain controls and crossover points. It's just a really cool, you know, really cool product that yeah. sounds really nice and is affordable. Every now and then we get one of those. Mm -hmm. And it works really, yeah. really yeah. well. Yeah. So um, big fan for sure. I love that five channel. What I do with the five channels is run it as a three channel. It makes a phenomenal three channel. So you get like 150 watts times two of AB class power uh, and then a nice 500 watts. So it makes a great, what I like to call front stage upgrade. Mm -hmm. So you can put some power to some front components, add a 12 to the back. Boom, go. That's right. What's up? Uh, thank you guys for my vocals, K2, uh, K2, yeah, okay, cool. Uh, will you guys ever come to South Africa? That would be cool. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'd love to come, but it's not on my list at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, it would be fun, though. That would you be know. cool. Uh, Dean, just trade in the Camaro and get your convertible. Eh. Jersey, Jersey in the house. Yeah. I'll be in Jersey in April, right? April, May? April. April. Going to Atlantic City to the DAS show in April. And then we're going to cruise around and see a bunch of dealers in the area. We're going to head over there uh, with Artie from AMP. He's their sales rep. So we're going to be there. Jeff Smith will be there. Um, I'm excited because it, it's like, it's, yeah, I'm just excited. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be in Philly and we're going to be in Jersey. And we're going to hang out with Frankie, which is the big Frankie, sales rep up yeah. there. I don't know where we're going, what we're doing. I'm just going to take a camera and film the whole thing and take you guys along for the ride. We're oh. calling it Bro Trip 2020. Bro Trip. Got to make shirts and all that stuff. Speaking of shirts, if you guys make sure you pick up your Do You Even Zip Tie Bro shirt. Those things are awesome. You can find them on Teesprings. Teesprings slash door size five star. Um, what do you got? All right. Uh, Catch me how up. How to make a T-harness for 2015 Dodge Ram 1500? Yes, man. Uh, what I year? It's a 15. I'm sure they um, have it. Yeah. Well, if it's a 15, it should be this. Hold on. If you have a 15 Dodge Ram, if it's got the 5 inch screen or the uh, bigger 8 inch screen in it, mm -hmm. you want the DCH3 or you want the uh, radio RP4 AP21 or 41. Um, because this will wake that radio. Go watch our video on it. We did a beta test on the AP4 CH. Mm -hmm. Is it 41? I think it's 41, where when you buy that product or you buy this in the DSR-1, it will trick the radio into thinking it's the Alpine system yeah, and give you a full system. preamp yeah. uh, so you don't have to do any high level to low level crap. But if you're just trying to use a T-harness, this guy here is the T-harness. Could you cut the little tape for yeah, me, please? I, can cut it. I like to cut stuff. On the subject of amps, when I was installing my Kenwood to my car, the stock, our Rockford Fosgate sound system, worse uh, than my trash stock radio. Any ideas on if it's because the amp Kenwood, excellent. 
Mm. No, that's right usually a really nice hand. But if your radio takes this harness and it is the bigger touchscreen, not the little tinies, but the big one, this is designed to fool radio. the stereo into radio. thinking it's an Alpine. So you can buy this, and of course the DSR1 plugs right in, or you can buy an Amp Pro AP4CH. Like I said, I think it's 41. You can go to pack-audio.com and check that out, or head over to iData slash Maestro and type in amplifier mm -hmm. replacement. Mm -hmm. And that is a really cool feature. Uh, Kenwood Exxon DDX. Oh, man. Hmm, I don't know. I don't know. Those things like that always get weird. Oh, Bobby's wearing a shirt again. D, surprise you never became a sales guy. Um, so believe it or not, well, used to sell stuff, I, I mean, probably. I've sold stuff before. Obviously, as an installer, you, you sell things, but it's it's not. I don't, I don't really, I can't do it for long. Like, talking with people, though I, I do this and, and, and whatnot. Um, ah, that was funny. <laughs> talk, talking with people isn't exactly one of my strong suits, we'll just say. Um, I, I, I have, a, I, have a, I, I can't lie. Um, so, when people ask me a question, I, I just, I tell the truth. And most people don't like the truth, so... You know, when you say, does this suck? And I'm oh, like, that's perfect. Uh, what about New Zealand? Remember, you winter is our beautiful summer. Dude, I would go to New Zealand. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I go to South, I go to all these places. I don't I I, I, but you know, I want to go see the Hobbits, man. South from Virginia. Um, does single voice call or do the voice call matter if I get four eight inch subs hooked up and to a mono amp capable of one ohm? It only matters. Okay, so why does dual and single voice calls exist? Originally, it was because home audio, uh, you needed one subwoofer. So you would take the signal from the left, the signal from the right, and you'd hook them up to both voice coils. It's like back in, all right, sorry, we're back. So as I was saying, the dual voice call was designed for that. Now, fast forward to now, why do we have a dual voice call? Originally, we had a single forum voice call and we had a dual forum voice call and we could use those combinations to get a lot of things and then we went to a dual voice call 2 ohm and a dual voice call 4 ohm which expanded our capabilities and that's where we're at right now is you have a, a dual 2 and a dual 4 and the combining those will get you the ohm loads that you want so we still have to make two woofers but originally it was just a, a sound thing to do home audio but now it is a combination to get the right ohm load we did the Cento uh, subwoofer the other day, and it came as a single 4 ohm. And it was weird because I haven't seen a single voice cold driver in a while. So if you buy four 8 inch subs and they're all 4 ohm, that's going to put you at a 1 ohm load. Yeah, you're golden. That's what you need. Yeah. I had the same problem my Outlander Sport. I don't remember what the problem was. Uh, so I bought Focal KRX3s a while ago. What would you suggest to power those? Uh, a one or two ten. Three amp total. Three amp total. Um. So the KRX threes are bi ampable through the crossover. If you get into a uh, a six twelve hundred from Audio Control or the four twelve hundred, if you're gonna if you're just doing fronts. So if you do the six twelve hundred, you could go full active and take out the um, crossovers. If yeah. you get the D4.800 or the LC4.800, uh, you can do um, use the bi-amp capability, put one and two on the mid-bass, three and four onto the, uh, the mid-range tweeter, because that's how they break that apart. Mm -hmm. And the bi-amp mode is that uh, two of the channels are for the mid-bass and the other two channels are for the mid-range and tweeter. So those are the combinations I'd probably look into. Of course, anyone's four channel or six channel will do the trick. Those are just the first two that popped into my head. I wonder why. What's up, guys? Love your show. Thank What's you. Up? All right, let's keep going down here. Yeah. Uh, offer a okay. Millie subs are single voice coils. See, there you go. So that's just mm -hmm. something that Hertz does. That's it. Uh, I recommend single eight ohm voice coils. Yeah. Okay. Uh, are are the next steps? Are you the next? Are the next step seller? Give us honest opinion about products. Oh yeah. I mean, I try. All right. I accidentally broke my new Pioneer Boost. Phone cable, do you know the size or how can I get another one? Pioneer boost phone. What is that? Pioneer boost phone cable. Hmm. I don't know. What is a Pioneer boost phone I mean, cable? out of the back of a Pioneer, it just has a USB. 
So if somebody plugged in a USB to a phone cable and then just hung the phone cable out, I assume if you pull the dash apart, you'll find the USB, put another one in there. I have another big question. What do you like best, ported or sealed? Both you guys. This one's easy. I like ported. I like ported too. Um, I like fat, boomy bass. I mean, really what it comes down to is, I mean, that's why I got into this when I was a kid is, you know, I wanted to shake the soccer mom's little SUV, baby mama up in front of my car. I just drove around like a little prick, right, you know, baby. just <laughs> mirror shaking, smiling. Yeah, so, I mean, that's what I built. Uh, oh, okay. You um, got it? You talk about the base now for the phone cable, the base now. Oh. Yes, so... Count the pins. Yeah. Count the pins on the phone cable. So, it, all you have to do, so, like, most phone cables have four, six, or eight, eight. little wires on them. It's, it's a phone cable. You can get them at Home Depot. You can actually get the ends at Home Depot and do it yourself. But just count the pins. Yeah. Me but, being I mean, as a teen. If, if, you have a, if you have a store that sells Pioneer, just go buy one. Uh, you, you can know? also get them from Pack Parts. You can buy the actual Parts. Pack phone cable if you yeah. want it from Pack Parts. Packparts.com. Uh, it's out of California. It's it's Pack Parts, not to be fused with Pack Dash Audio, two totally different places. It's just called Pack, Pack Parts. Uh, don't Ooh. lie, there was an SUV when you got it. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Hold on. What are we talking about? Any idea on how much the Kenwood floating... No, no idea on that one yet. Uh, so, funny story about the Kenwood 10-inch. We ran into Seth, which he's been on the show before. Uh, he is the national sales trainer for Kenwood. Yep. Uh, when we were at Dallas, he was outside the event. And, of course, we talked for a couple minutes. And I said, hey, man, if it ever... Because he lives here in Florida. I said, if it ever should happen that you have one of these in your possession, you know, and would like to come on and talk about them... You know, by all means, you, you, open invitation. Any day, any time, I don't care. If you need me to meet you somewhere, just so we can get a hands-on on that, that that would be perfect. I'm down. And he was like, dude, it's so funny. Yep. That product came straight from Japan at CES. They put it in the booth. They took it out of the booth, put it back in a box, mailed it to Japan. What was it, like three weeks later? Uh, it, they flew it back from Japan, put it into the booth at California, and he's like, as soon as this show's over, we got to put it back in a box and send it back to Japan. They're not letting that thing out of their sight right now, yeah. so no idea. But it should be out in like two or three months. So, But they're constantly refining it and refining it and refining it. And if you saw Fernando talking to the guy about it, some of the features that has is phenomenal. Oh, so really we're nice. super anxious yeah. to... Yeah. To take a look at that you never know i mean we're gonna see it again at the end of next month so yeah. we might take some more time and see if we can get seth pull him into a corner and just you know talk to us so, some more about it because yeah. we know it's gonna be hot right. does the t2 what ulfa okay. knife best way to trim fast rings yeah that's what we use the the yeah. smaller one so t2 fosgate can handle 200 watts rms i don't know i've never put 200 watts to them i mean yeah no. I mean, we put a bunch of power to them but a lot of power but I mean, we've bridged some serious power. Why are we talking about 200 watts? Like, what kind of 200 watts? Ford Bronco, Chevy Blazer, oh my God, SUVs. Oh, Broncos, geez. Benz, BMW, Bass, Bangos, and a pair of bottles. Yeah, t t yep. Mm -hmm. uh, what gauge wire should I use to run to the rear to a fuse distribution block running two 400 watts and one 1,000 watts? Zero gauge. Yeah. yeah. Zero gauge. Now, if you go, okay, you can just... Uh, just bought the new Prime 1200. Awesome. We're still waiting nice. for our 500 to come back from its trip <laughs> so we can do an unboxing review on it. Um, but sweet. Uh, there is a power wire calculator that you can use. That you can just Google power wire chart. What it'll do is it'll tell you the length of how, how long the wire is going to be. And then it'll tell you, go across and how much power you have. And it'll yeah. tell you what size it should be. My guess, looking just off the top of my head, 800 watts. That's 1800 watts. I don't know how far you're going to run it, but if it's in the back of the car, I would do zero gauge. That would just be that. Yeah. All right. Uh, out, uh, out of bridge P404 full size amp. Um, there again, if you're going with T's, I wouldn't bridge it. I would just do bi amp. I would do uh, one and two on tweeter, three and four on mid, and just use the bi amp crossover that it has, and life would be great. I just just ordered my H8 nice. DSP from Hertz. I know we got to get one of those in and do a review on it. Mm -hmm. I got it. Well, I got to get. Okay, so I want to get. I want to get the Nove, and we should probably get the Hertz. So I need the Nove and the Hertz. No, H8. 
Yeah, those. I want to review both of those. Uh, can't you? Uh, okay, hold on. Should can you I run? Also do, oh, okay. Go ahead. One or two or zero. The block can support two, two cables. Two. I mean, zero gauge. One or two. I'm thinking one or two zero gauge. I mean, oh. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you not to run two zero gauge. If you got the money, by all means, go crazy, baby. You know, you can never have enough power wire. Uh, what cars are you guys working on today? So this morning we had a. Oh, dude, we worked on two Cadillacs. That's right. We had an Eldorado. We had an Eldorado, old school Eldorado convertible. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Uh, that we had done like six or seven years ago. Uh, he had a leak in the trunk. Um, so the power wires had corroded, so we had to run some new power wires in it. And then we had a CTS yeah. uh, that we had to put that metric kit in. Yay us. Um, yeah. There you go. Please review, not remove. Oh, please review the Helix. It's on the list, baby. It's on the list. No doubt about it. Active versus bi-amp versus bridge. Why cables, decisions, decisions. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. I totally understand that. Um, but yes, Y cables for sure. You have to use Y cables. Caddies. I know. Caddy. How to ruin a day. Candies. Put a put a caddy in it. Uh, what are your thoughts on all of these Android head units? Um, and my thoughts on that are it's time to go. All right, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Enjoy your Wednesday. No, if it's snowing, it sucks. Enjoy your cold. It's raining here, so it'll be raining and cold. You guys have fun. We'll talk to you some more tomorrow. Bye. Bye. So how's everybody doing on this spectacular Saturday? Ow. Oh, speaker wires hitting me in the back as I lean against the counter there. So it's Saturday, which means really one thing. You know what that one thing is? What's up, Johnny? It means the live show tonight on YouTube. That's right. 6.30. Six o'clock. Six o'clock. Oh, that's right. It's not Monday night. Monday night, 6.30. It's not Monday. It's no, Monday. It's, it's the 29th of February. It's the last day of February. Can you believe that? February is already over. Yes. Hey, guys. Uh, how's it going? What's going on, Christian? Uh, Johnny from Trinidad, Tobago in the house. Sorry. It's my, my, my pronunciation of that was terrible. Hello, Dean. Hello, Fernando. What's up? Hey, hey, hey. Ho, ho, ho. Anyways, so what are we working on is always the question. 6 p.m., always 6 p.m. We were working on a Jeep Grand Cherokee, and what we're adding in is a new radio. This guy right here, I know, this is funny. It's singled in. He had the Infinity system in there. We pulled that out. We're replacing that with this Kenwood little amplifier right here, KCA M1814. We're also putting in a bunch of the Kenwood uh, 6x9 with the 2.5 that goes up in the dash. And the matching six and a half. So we got, I think Fernando's got this one in right now. Did you put the crossovers on those? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Six by six and a half is in, six by nine is in. We're also going with this little amplified eight inch Kenwood. That's going to sit right here. He carries a lot of stuff in the back of his car. He's a painter. So this is what the normal back of his car looks like. Uh, and then this seat is usually folded down. So in case someone needs to sit here. What we got going on with the amplifier is I'm just waiting for him to finish because every speaker in the car is blown. So I can't polarity test anything. So I just need to solder these wires in. But we made a new bracket to mount it where that factory infinity amplifier is, of course. So this will just go right in there. When he's done, I'll finish soldering up the wires. I just got the harness done. He's actually retaining his steering wheel controls, which was like, what? this is an 03, so good for him. But here's our harness. All there's our steering wheel control. I like to tape over the dip switches on the CP2 just because. And the other thing we're doing is his antenna is destroyed. Who knew? Who knows? Probably random car wash broke this guy. So Metro makes this piece right here, which is an add-on FM antenna. It's amplified, so I've already got that mounted, and the wire, of course, is coming out of the dash. Yay! Hey, that's that's what's going on in this. Hey guys, just finished up my last job for the day. Once again, Metro letdown. <laughs> that was Johnny. <laughs> oh my god! Gosh, dang Johnny, that was that was harsh. Um, yeah, six and a half or six and three quarter components that have good mid base. Most of the time. Yeah, go seven inch Kenwood Exelons. Yeah, there you go. Man. You want mid base. The six, the seven inch Kenwood Exelons will have the most mid base of that form factor. 
And the nice thing about it is they come with a spacer mm -hmm. uh, similar to like these, like this. Um, and what you do is you break off all of this if you don't need it and it's a six and a half to seven inch upsize so you can fit the seven inch where a six and a half goes so that's pretty cool this is the six by nine of course and this is yeah but the seven inch looks just like this it just has a hole round hole instead of this football shaped hole uh pack for the win always always pack for the win uh metro let me down yesterday well, my Metro story actually wasn't their fault. So we had a, we, since we're telling Metro stories, there again, nothing bad to say here. This was just one of those things. We were doing a Jeep, was, no, what was it? It was a Volkswagen. Volkswagen T1. Tiguan. 2015. 2015 Volkswagen Tiguan that has the new RGB camera in it. Metro is the only company right now that makes an RGB adapter for Volkswagen. Right now, right as we're speaking, they're the only ones making an adapter for it. And on the applic, so I went online and it wasn't there, which should have been clue number one. But I went under the application guide and the instructions, and it was there. And then it didn't work. It would only turn the camera on for a second. So I called and I was like, "Hey, got through." And the guy was like, no, no, we had to pull that one uh, out because it does something different than the others. And that was my much a story. So it actually, it was a sad ending, but a happy ending. They just need to update their owner's manual, the little piece of paper that goes inside. But you always use the website. Always use the website, I guess, was the moral to that story. Right. And yeah, 2007 E350HK system, FO. Is that supposed to be? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm, oh, wait a minute. Oh, I know. Ah, uh, okay, so you were using that Metro, mm-hmm. Been there, done that. We ended up just putting a five-channel amplifier in. Save the day. Hey, when updating firmware on a Pioneer radio, do you unzip the file or will the head unit unzip it? I already have it on a flash drive. None of our video, uh, you unzip it. And the reason why I don't mention it in that is because the Windows computer that we use automatically unzips the file when we click on them. So yeah, you have to unzip it first. Oh, hey. Zip it, smack it up, flip it. Uh, cool antenna, have needed something for years, don't use radio anymore. Exactly, I mean, I'm with you. 2015 Kia Optima steering wheel control interface didn't work, CP5 worked first try. Exactly, Johnny, you should have known better from the get-go, but I understand, sometimes it's easier. Uh, how are the non-Exelon 6.5 Kenwood components? How's the mid-base and tweeter? I gotta be honest with you, I've never tried them. We're an Exelon dealer. Excellent gives you an extra year warranty, so we always just go to those. And they are different, so I, I, I really I couldn't tell you the answer to that question. You guys are the best. Too bad you're not in Toronto. Maybe for you. I'm pretty happy I'm not in Toronto because it's snowing and cold. I don't do well in cold. <laughs> Fiber optic, yeah. Yeah. Um, for the fiber optic thing, what you might want to try next time is a company called Spiral Audio. Spiral Audio, I believe, this is just, uh, they're importing another manufacturer's, Connect2 maybe, uh, into the US and using those. It's an online company, so you just, you have, you can't get anything. But the last one we did, we used Spir the Spiral Audio kit and it worked like a dream. So that would be my suggestion anytime you run into those fiber optics, BMW, Mercedes Benz, check, out. check out Spiral Audio. Um, there again, it's the internet, so there's no one you call or anything. You just go onto their website and set up your, your stuff and go from there. Uh, how can I get an optical out from a factory head unit? You can't. Uh, the only option for a, an optical out from a factory head unit is if your car takes something like an Amp Pro. So, for example, if you had like the JBL with the Infinity system or you had a Chrysler with some form of system or you had a Ford with uh, some form of a system that has the ability to add an Amp Pro because the Amp Pro gives you the option to add the Tosh Link output into and the GM, of course, with the Bose. Um, that would really be the only way to do that. Otherwise, it would make no sense because you, you can't get a digital out. So you'd have to have an analog to digital. It would, there's, yeah, those are really the only options you have to do that that make any sense whatsoever. It makes any sense. Yeah. Uh, great show. Oh, hey, thanks. Uh, when should you upgrade your alternator? 
huh when you learn how to change it yourself is usually the best answer for that uh, upgrading the alternator can be something that is a struggle to do but you know you know honestly the it's tough. I mean, you know, if you got a big, big system with lots and lots of power and stuff like that, obviously upgrading your alternator is the way to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm personally more of a fan. Uh, I mean, if you're going to be sitting in the parking lot cranking it all day long, definitely get an alternator. But even still, you know, plugging it into the wall is probably still your best option. So you might want to check, like, Stinger makes some uh, chargers, some uh, AC to DC converters that are really nice, and you just charge it at nighttime. Yeah, but like we say, you know, depends on how big is your system. If you just put into 12s and a small amplifier. Yeah, I mean, if you got like 3,000 watts tops, yeah, just second battery and you're good. Exactly. Have you ever installed a radio in a 2001 IS-250? IS-250, yes. That's I'm going to go Lexus. with whatever he says. Yeah, I'm sure it yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't remember everything. I, I'm one of those, I'm a visual, so it's like when I see it, I go, yeah, I know what to do here. When I got to talk about it, sometimes it's like, especially on the Lexus Infinities and stuff like that, I, they're, they're all just kind of like blurred like together in my head. Infinity G35, G37, Q50, Q60, uh, Q... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, have you heard when the Honda will get some T-Harness love? I know, right? Oh. <sighs> yeah, I have heard, but nothing to report. Everyone's just kind of working on it. Uh, so yeah, it kind of sucks, but in, in there again, even some of the guys we've talked to are like, what? They're either playing stupid or they honestly don't know what's going on in those cars. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's going to, obviously it's a race right now between Metra and Idata. Who's going to make theirs first. Uh, I heard Metra bought connects Two, but I'll check his spiral. Metra did not buy connects Two. Actually, if you must know, amp global owns connects Two. So here's what happened is um, Connects2 signed a contract with Metra to produce products sure. for a certain amount of time before Amp Global bought them. So Connects2 is making products for Metra, uh, specifically designed for Metra by, you know, whatever they want them to do. Uh, but Amp Global does own Connects2. So, and there again, I don't know the ins and outs of it or any, that what's going on there, but we do know that Amp Global owns them and that they are making parts for Metro. Uh, is there a list of installers that attend Knowledge Fest? Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, there is, but we don't have access to it. That would be cool. See, my thing with the Knowledge Fest is I still feel there should be some form of a, like a, like we got the cool, like for teaching things, which were really cool, but I feel there should be some form of a, like, something like if you attend so many classes and like there should be a code that checks in so you know and you get certificates that say i attended this class and i attended that class so that because everyone likes certificates to hang on the wall and, and show that you've actually done something and learned something and that way you know for those of you in the know that know what knowledge fest is when you walk into a stereo shop and you see hey this guy's attended knowledge fest i know what that is you know you know, some of the manufacturers used to do that years ago when you'd sit through their trainings. They would give you pieces of paper, but, you know, eventually it just kind of went away because print is dead. But we all still like it. But, yeah, no. Uh, Mercedes has factory optics. Uh, yeah, Mercedes does have a factory fiber optic system. As far as interfacing with it, there's, depending on the year, there's two companies that make interface. There's a company called Mo Bridge that makes interfaces for fiber optic. And then there's another company called Nav TV that makes it for the more modern stuff. But those are the two that are there. Any head units out there with an optical output for high res player? Yeah, exactly. The, uh, so right now when it comes to like aftermarket with Tosh Link output, you're looking at a GS9 from Sony and you're looking at either the, the um, okay. Elevate or the High 10. High 10. Those both have optical output. But as far as like brand, nah. I mean, you know, like Alpine, Kenwood, Pioneer, that type of stuff. Um, and Sony hasn't moved it on to any of their regular decks yet. That would be cool. Um, ah, okay, hold on. I keep touching the wrong buttons here. 
Alright, hold on, let's see. Yep, keep going, keep going. Is uh, I did a plan on doing anything for Mazda. I'm really close friends. Yes. I'm. <laughs> how do you know? Uh, did, did they say something? I was gonna say I'm close friends with Mark, but he doesn't tell me yeah. everything. I mean, yeah. The last time that they were here, they were talking about it. They, they were talking about Mazda. Working on it, yeah. So you but gotta remember. That, uh, Nissan. Yeah. They, they, there, there, there's a lot. I'm sure there's a whiteboard with a lot of things on it, but. It, Dude, release dates are hard. It's not like these things take like 30 days to build. And when there are companies that do take 30 days to build, chances are good they don't work. Or there's a lot that needs to be done. Um, so they say they're coming. They're coming. They don't ever give us like a date. They you know. Where are they? Uh, how do you set the amp gains with a DSP using a DD1? Hmm. Well, that depends because, you know, once you start working that EQ... I mean, personally, if you're going to be using an EQ and, and having all kinds of fun like that, start with your gains all the way down. Uh, and then see where your EQ is. So if you start playing through EQ and you start raising the gain on some of the EQ up to, let's say, 5 and 6 dB, you're done. That's just, that's it. You're, you've tapped out. got to be real careful with, with gain and equalization. Uh, have you ever installed a radio on a 2000? Okay. Yeah, have. Oh, and you did have to bypass the amp. Yes yeah always yes always bypass that amp we were actually just talking about it yesterday with kyle <laughs> that was the one we were talking about that's funny yeah um what makes sense i never had any bad experience with connects 2 but it's been hard to get a hold of their interfaces yeah it, okay so if you're a so here's the secret if you're an amp global direct dealer you can go to your salesman if you know the Connects 2 number and they can order it for you. You may pay more uh, just because you have to have it shipped from Europe to your place. But supposedly, that's something you can do. I don't know. That's what they're telling us. I haven't tried it yet. I haven't tried it yet. Uh, okay. Uh, the Denshin doesn't do optical. Okay, so we're still talking about that. Best cap for a two and a half, uh, two points. Uh, Best cap for a small four inch, uh, it's 47 microfarad, 47. So not 4.7 or 0.47, 47 microfarad is the one you'd want to go with. Did you know where to purchase OEM parts for factory radios? Not a clue. Maybe parts? No. No, no, factory radios? Don't know. Uh, how do you set up the 4400 NEX to remain in the fixed position versus tilting back and forth every time it powers on and off? You have to set the screen to zero. So you hit the eject button. It's the eject button, right? And then it shows you Four. the 4400. Uh -huh. Isn't it the eject button that's the screen tilt? Uh. I haven't seen one in so long. But yeah, you have your screen set to zero and then it won't it won't move every time you turn on and off the car. If you set it to any tilt, it's always going to go back to zero when you turn on and off the car. Yes, that's right, yes. I have the Alpine ILXW650, but do you know of any updates to add to an aftermarket radio that will allow you to use Apple iPod Classics? No, those are gone. That I mean, that, it's an end-of-life plug, so, you know, there's no reason for a manufacturer to keep allowing that to happen. Uh, you know, when Apple pulled the pulled it that was it man it was on borrowed time and, and that time has come and gone so yeah bobby what's going on why does my pioneer 5200 nex change volume when i stop and stop and take off depends what you have it hooked up to if you have it in a car that had yeah that had some form of factory uh, uh speed, speed volume control yeah. and you retain the factory amplifier then it's going to retain on. It's something you have to shut off in the factory radio before you put the aftermarket in. So, for example, if you have like a Toyota or something like that where there was that feature or GM, some of the GMs will have that, uh, then, yeah, it's going to keep doing it because you left that as a default. Um, other than that, if it's just doing like really extreme stuff, you may just have a bad speaker. I don't know. Uh, can you do two-channel input and four-channel output on a four channel amp or do you have to have signal going into all four channels that is a wonderful question and there's the fire truck if you're doing a four channel amp and it has a switch that says two channel four channel 
you can flick the two channel four channel switch and that will allow you to do channels one and two input now if you're going to bridge let's say channels one and two to driver's front three and four to uh passenger front then no you have to run y jacks because channel one is actually channel one and two and channel two is actually channel three and four now if your amplifier doesn't have a two two or four switch or a and a b switch because sometimes it'll say input a and then it'll say input a slash b if it doesn't have one of those then you gotta run y jacks into it to feed all those inputs uh what are we working on jeep grand cherokee uh safe to start a kenwood exelon head deck at 30 max 35 week Ooh, go to town family says hi hey bobby's family what's up what kind of sleeve loom do you use on your speaker wires install it's it's like rubber plastic looking oh uh so we use the split loom on some of it this is like when we're doing backup cameras and it's going to go outside this is just regular split loom there's a this is quarter inch this is eighth inch uh, that's eighth inch yeah so the small stuff at the eighth inch that's quarter inch quarter, and then half. yeah we don't really use it anymore yeah so then everything else is gonna be this stuff here like this is quarter inch braided this is three eighths this is half inch and this is three quarter inch hope that answers that i have four six inch dd audio subs and would like a suggestion for 2000 watt one ohm amplifier why not a dd audio amplifier they make amps that are pretty good i would just stick with one of those or an audio control 1500 that's a yeah an audio control 1500 would be nice um the nex 15 is in a troll browser ss that means it had bows so that might just mean that you have to plug your factory radio back in and disable that control system or because it's a, a trailblazer with bows in it your bose amplifier could be going bad it's got that cool little eight inch backwards mounted speaker in the bottom of the door mm -hmm. yeah sexy right. yeah i love redoing those <laughs> oh hey anthony what's going on did hey. you see you're in the video we just posted our little trip to knowledge fest recap no did you yeah. guys uh, get him a shot no, yeah did the oh, rock him hard thing shot. all right shot, 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 shot. Oh, hey, there was more. Dang, I thought that was in. Optical input on a head unit, not an output to connect an external player like an aux input, any head unit with that feature. Optical input on a head unit, not an output. Mm, no. Like an optical in? No. I mean, we can't even get optical out, let alone exactly. optical in. I mean, the DSR-1 has a digital uh digital input which is the orange so it's it's co a coax style input which is the digital um, dsps have uh, a couple of the dsps have optical in but that's it that's where you're going to find all that um uh what amp would you recommend to run to jl w7 12 inch the biggest one you can get that you can afford uh dean do you sell 47 microfarads on dnf tool jar yes yes we do there are caps on there and links to them i did cool you're welcome it was fun uh should i just buy an aftermarket radio yeah i mean sure i mean why not uh what's the math behind to find what cap to use on a speaker um there is math but honestly off the top of my head i don't know it i'd have to go dig out my book that i have on making crossovers and put it all together so it's not something i can tell you right now because i haven't had to make a crossover in a really long time uh show on facebook later today. show us yeah. on f on shows YouTube. on youtube later today at six o'clock ksx case uh k fest video was great for now is a natural public speaker uh, <laughs> Oh, well, you, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. he just found out yesterday that he's going to be doing the Spanish audio control in Orlando and Dallas. So right. mm -hmm. good for you, man. Good for you. I don't have to do it. I mean, I could. I'll be there, you know, smiling yeah. for at yeah, least the first right. five minutes of it before I go. I got to get out of here. Like, <laughs> I don't know what this guy's saying. Just, just yeah. keep talking and talking and yeah. talking and talking. Oh, my God. Oh, my. Dude, <laughs> so at the end of their class. All right. So. 
they just like to talk. Like, you know, like, uptight white people have a hard out, man. It's like, what time we got over here? Four? We're done at 3.55, okay? Because it's like, there's other things that have to happen. These guys, we got to be out by four. It's like 4.10. We're like, dude, there's other people that got to be in this room. You need to wrap. Th-. And they're all, like, talking about, like, exchanging phone numbers. It's any and, way they can and, make their class outside because yeah, we're busy yeah, right we got, here, Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I was like, I'm, I'm sitting in the back going, wrap it up, dude. And, and he's I'm like, like I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, no. These guys are still asking questions and stuff. I'm like, okay. Uh, next one. Can't wait to meet you in Indy. I can't wait to go to hey, Indy. Man, We've been yeah. thinking about Indy a lot. That's and, right. and I've had nightmares about it already, so it's all good. Oh, wow. So we're not going uh, to. Don't buy that amp. Uh, the tramp, uh, I mean, those work, you know, whatever. Um, I mean, just do your research. You can find yeah. more, you know. Don't yeah. If you actually have a big speaker or big speakers, uh, spend the money, man. Spend the money and get a good amplifier. I haven't, I, I know the, the the NVX stuff. I've seen it. I've We've only installed, like, a few pieces mm-hmm. of it. Never had any problems with it. But I don't know what the VAD series is, so... Yeah. Uh, when is Fernando? When is, when is Knowledge Fest when is coming to Chicago? Chicago? The closest it'll be is Indy. That's so you got to right. drive from Chicago to Indy. And they have a lot of shops from Chicago that drive to, to Indy. Indy. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Sounds Plus is close. Is one of them. Use uh, installs that are on speaker line outputs from the amp. Uh, it's not PET braided. It looks different. <laughs> Uh, it's not loom, it's heat shrink. So the stuff coming out of the amplifier that you're probably talking about, like the colored stuff, like purple, green, that's heat shrink. Uh-huh. It's three to one, half inch heat shrink. Yeah. Um, money you issue, what's the best? Uh, money you issue, what is the best? Buy a Rockford uh, 2500. I mean, that's that's pretty pretty impressive amplifier mm-hmm. for sure. Uh, Focal Evo versus K2. K2. It's always going to be K2. I mean, the Evo is nice. Don't get me wrong. The Evo is really flags. nice, and it's, it's definitely the new, the new hot new redesign yeah. of the flags. Yeah. So. so, but I mean, you know, they just redesigned the K2 like three years ago. So, uh, you know, that's probably going to get redesigned in another year or two because they just redid the M. So they redid first. They redid the K2. Yeah. Then they redid the M. Now they just done the Flax. They also just did, and along you know the one that no one ever talks about uh, that they just got done redesign was the plug and play. They just resigned mm-hmm. all the plug and plays too. Not all, yeah. most of the plug and plays. So the plug and plays all got redesigned. So maybe we'll see access next year, and then it'll go back around to K two. So I'm thinking what three more years, two and a half. K two, K two get redesigned, but K two is still is still like yeah, it's K two, you know. But don't get me wrong, those evos sound really nice. Uh, jail guy needs an amp that can handle a half ohm stable. Well, the JL, the old JL 1000, 1001, that was half, was half it half? Was yeah. it half on? I have one. I have I was, not. You had one. Yeah. I, I, I don't one. know. I, I don't. Yeah, I got You got me. Um, 2019 Honda Civic Type R has 12 speaker system. I'd like to know what speakers you would recommend keeping and what speakers you'd recommend leaving alone. All right, so what you need in order to put a stereo in there is you need something that has six channels of a minimum. These are the minimum requirements in order to put a put a, a system in your Honda Civic. You need something that has six channels of input. Four of two of those channels have to be discrete, meaning they have to be not connected to like some DSPs. It's like channel one and two, channel three and four, and those are all paired together. So. You need something that has at least six channels of input because you need the front tweeter, the front mid, the center channel, and the subwoofer. They need to be on all their channels so that you can direct them to where they need to go. You have to retain the center channel because that's where your navigation prompts and Bluetooth and all that fun stuff come from. And, of course, the subwoofer in the back, well, you want bass. Um, After that, like, we went – the one that we did, the two that we've done, we used the Alpine DSP, the 850S. 850s uh, yep. mm-hmm. because it has the eight channel amplifier built into it so we went full active on the front with a four channel amp we did a, an amp on the subs and then we used the eight channels of amplification out of the alpine to power up the center and the full active rear so there was five channels there so everything worked out great because that dsp has 12 channels of output so we had lots of fun mm-hmm. all right listen we got to get back to work we got to finish right. this thing so we can get on to the, on the show, show tonight so yeah. if you have more questions make sure you tune in tonight at six o'clock on youtube right. we'll be answering questions having a good time yeah that yeah, yeah.
All right, no, I'm good. All right, see you guys. Bye. Bye.